Welcome back to the workshop, everybody. So, so happy that you're here with me today while we give away this wonderful plane. I'm so excited about this because somebody's going to get this. And even if all they do is put this on a mantle or on, in the office, just remember, protect that sharp edge uh, from anybody's fingers and from your furniture. But uh, it's my cherry, quarter sawn cherry, and this side has quite a bit of stripe. This one has a little bit of stripe, but has nice quarter sawn ray figure. Beautiful shellac finish on there. Beechwood body. Nice flat sole. Put a fresh edge on the uh, blade. So this plane is going to go to one of the people who sent me a postcard. I've got all sorts of postcards here. But the winner was, and I used one of those computer random generators, I typed in all the addresses. This is the winner. And if you know this card, you know who you are. But I will say, it's a fellow by the name of Rich, with the last name initial G, and he's in Connecticut. So this plane is going to be going to Connecticut. This is the uh, part of uh, a building on the Thoreau Farm in Massachusetts. So the, uh, <clears throat> the list included people from as far away. Well, I'm in Pennsylvania, northern Pennsylvania. They came in as far away as Utah, Oregon, Indiana, the Virgin Islands, Tennessee, Kansas, some from Pennsylvania, Maryland, Missouri, Israel, Sweden, Belgium. So I, I'm thinking geographically, Israel may be the farthest one. Connecticut, California, more Oregon, South Dakota, Belgium, Washington State, Quebec, Sweden, Massachusetts, Washington, Utah, Wisconsin, New York, Michigan, Tennessee, Kansas, South Dakota. They, they came in pretty much from all over the place. And, and I really, really liked this. This was a great thing. And almost everybody wrote, there was one handmade card here, but almost everybody wrote a little note on the back. Some of them very brief, some of them a little more in depth talking a little bit about the channel and uh, I really do appreciate it. The channel is about you. It's about sharing information with you and uh, the biggest thing that you can do for the channel, for me, is to share the episodes that you really, really like. And it doesn't really matter that there are some people out there who decide to give thumbs down. All right? I don't have any names to call them or anything because that's what they thought at the moment okay uh, maybe they clicked on the link thinking they were going to see something like this and they got something like that and so they said this is ridiculous and that's fine that's that's what you know programs are about you know you just some you like some you don't but that's all good but if you really really like the channel and you want to see the channel grow then share it. That's up to you, okay? Uh, but I like this postcard idea. It's sort of old school, and I didn't really believe. On one hand, I, I thought I wouldn't get this many, and then on the other hand, I thought, well, I should be getting a stack this, you know, a yard high, you know, considering there are thousands of people watching this. But I, I guess, while I was sleeping, <laughs> the, the world just uh, totally went away from paper and pencil and postcards and, and writing, you know, writing a little note on it and you know, saying, hey, uh, thinking of you today, here's a, a funny picture or here's a beautiful you know, screenshot or uh, not screenshot, but uh, landscape. But everything today is electronic and instant. You take a picture and click, boom, you send it to Joe. You take a click, boom, send it to mom. 
or you take a picture and click, send it to a list of 500 people instantaneously. But uh, when your battery is out or your phone is gone, you could still look at these. So we'll, we'll put these up somewhere in the shop when I get reorganized. I'm trying to get out of this big building. Um, that's going to be a, a subject for a whole nother video. But I'm trying to get out of this big building and move into a small, small shop. And uh, part, part of that has a couple of things to do with just, I don't need the big shop anymore. I used to have a dozen machines in here. Now all the machines are gone. So, um, so that's that. So Rich, here's the plane you'll be getting. Beautifully tuned, fresh honed edge. Now this is butternut, so it makes you feel like you're a superhero when it comes to planing. But, the, the shavings that are coming off are just absolutely wonderful. Here's a couple tips for you, Rich, and for anyone else. Caring for a wooden hand plane, whether it's a modern one like this one that I made, or if it's an antique, okay? This room is not climate controlled in the summer, but as long as I keep the door shut, it does stay at a pretty even temperature and humidity. So they're pretty much protected. I keep them waxed, and I keep to keep them clean. The minute I see any sort of oxidation on the cutting edge, I clean it, polish it. But if your shop gets really hot and humid in the summer and then it gets very, very cold, maybe freezing and dry and maybe damp even in the winter or the fall, the best place to keep your wooden hand planes and in fact almost any tool is you clean and polish it, oil or wax it, and you put it in some sort of a box or cabinet or even in a drawer, okay? Protect your edges and don't place the flat sole down on anything metal. And if you can, even make yourself a little half inch thick, just square piece of wood or even a piece of, of dowel and just prop up one end. So that way there's mostly air and very little contact with whatever the the box or drawer is made out of. If you have a really well climate controlled building where you, you've got average humidity and average temperature year round, it's not as big an issue, okay? But uh, keep it in a, uh, in a cabinet or a box or whatever. If you're going to keep it in the office, the same rules apply about propping it up, okay? If you want to put it on a shelf. Back the iron up out of the way so that no, nobody cuts themselves. Or even, if you wanted to, you could even make a, um, a dummy iron for in there and just have a rounded blunt edge on it and keep the sharp one tucked away. But that's about it really. You know, you just keep your tools clean and dry and dust free. Wax them, oil them and uh, check on them once in a while. If you haven't used it in a while, pull the wedge out, pull the blade out, clean and polish it, maybe give it a light honing and put it back together. That way you know you're not getting any oxidation. All right, especially, especially when you have double bladed irons. Okay, you got your cutting iron and you got your chip breaker, or what they call the cap iron. If you're not going to use these for extended periods of time, loosen the screw, okay, and flip them around so that you can get underneath and wax and oil underneath here and wax and oil the top or oil and wax, whichever you want to do, um, 
the entire surface of where your cutting edge is going to be someday. If you leave them together like this with dust in between there, that's going to attract moisture and that's where it's going to rust, underneath the cap iron. And then you got to go through the whole flattening process. So it's common sense taking care of your tools. But with wood planes, you have to be just a little bit more careful about humidity. It doesn't really hurt them. They'll, they may move a little bit, but when the weather changes, they move back. And every once in a while, you, you get yourself a flat surface with some 220 grit, and you can lightly re-flatten your sole. So that's about it. Um, make yourself some sort of a wooden mallet for adjusting it, and you're good to go. Thanks again, everybody. If you liked the videos and you, you thought this was a neat idea, give it the old thumbs up and share this with other people. Head out to your shop. Go make some shavings. Walter out.